Hi guys, Tom from Cord Pro, here with an exciting video where we had the opportunity to sit down and have a chat to Will Reeves. Will is a young and enthusiastic mix engineer, helping to enhance artists' visions, not only within stereo mixes, but Dolby Atmos too. Will recently mixed Stormzy's number one album, This Is What I Mean, as well as working with artists such as Olivia Dean, Will I Am, and G-Eazy. He very kindly spared some time to have a chat to us about his experiences, music, and what it's like to work in the professional industry. You can find a link to Will's social media in the description below. And thanks to Cube East for giving us the opportunity to be able to record the interview. Hope you guys enjoy. Hi, Will. It's great to meet you in person um, at long last. Yeah. Um, so could you tell us a little bit about yourself, uh, who you are, what you do? Yeah, my name's Will Reeves. Uh, I am a mixing engineer. Um, and yeah, I, I work with kind of a variety of artists in stereo mixes and Atmos mixes, just, you know, what, whatever the client needs. Mm -hmm. Who are some of those artists? Um, yes, yeah, so recently I have just finished an album with Olivia Dean that has come out, her mm -hmm. debut album called Messy, so uh, mixed that in Spatial Audio, um, which was absolutely fantastic, really enjoyed that. Um, I'm working with a couple of bands at the moment, a band from Manchester called Cassia, which is a lot of fun, the, those guys are, are, you know, a lot of fun to work with. Um, I'm working with an artist called Maya Delilah on some songs at the moment. She's kind of a killer guitar player, bluesy, jazzy, kind of some country elements in there as well. Mm -hmm. So yeah, there's a real variety. I don't want to be pigeonholed too much yeah. into one genre, you know? Okay, absolutely. Yeah, because obviously there are some engineers mm. that are like, this is the artist and genre that I will work with and that is it. That's all I do. So yeah. you like to sort of expand your horizon on that front. And, yeah, absolutely. Yeah? I, I started, when I started mixing, I was probably more primarily in like a hip hop area, but I quickly noticed that that was a really saturated um, genre in the UK. There were a lot of guys doing really really good work in in that area so i've kind of moved away from that a little bit i still dip into it every now and then mm -hmm. um but yeah kind of move, moving more into kind of a indie live instrumentation genre which okay i really enjoy that's good that's good if you enjoy it that's what matters more than anything else really, really? yeah so this is um a really nice space that we're here um in cubies so is this your main working space or are you dotted around in different areas depending on what you're working on um so when when i was based in london um up until about three months ago i would yeah i had a room at cube west which is part royal mm -hmm. um so i had a long-term let there um, when I knew I was leaving London, I obviously gave that up because the commute would be too much. And then now that I dip in and out of London every now and then, the Cube is kind of like a perfect place to, you know, take a take a day mm -hmm. rent if I need to. Um, but other than that, yeah, I'm kind of just like on the move. Um, I mix from home. I've got a little home rig that I work from, and then yeah, just just do day sessions as and when as and when I need to. Sure. So what does your uh, your home rig look like then? What's that, what's that comprised of? <laughs> Currently it looks a bit messy because I'm <laughs> I'm in in the middle of kind of building the next studio. Um so my my working home rig at the moment is my Mac Pro. Um I'm running Pro Tools uh and I'm listening on a pair of Audacy LCDXs. Um, and for my really critical stuff, I'm, I'm using the Chord Electronic Mojo 2, which is nice. very, very good. Very <laughs> accurate, I would say. <laughs> That's what we like to hear. Yeah. That was a, yeah. Excellent. All right, cool. Um, so what does the average working day look like for you? The average working day for me would look like no alarm. <laughs> There's no alarm going. You lucky man. Yeah, absolutely not. Stopped, stopped doing those a long time ago. Um, I will have some food in the morning and then I usually like to get some fresh air or, or get some exercise in. So go for a workout or, you know, a walk or a cycle before I start working just to, you know, get mm -hmm. the blood pumping a little bit. And then I'll sit down and, and get mixing or, you know, um, recalls for mixes that I've done or... If it's a slower day, then it's admin and emails and, you know, bits like this or, you know, w whatever needs doing really. And yeah, I'm sure the majority of kind of like mixing engineers would say the same thing. You never really know what, what what's going to happen in the day. So I could be done by four o'clock if it's not a very mm -hmm. busy day. 
I could be working into the early hours if it's a busy day and we're working to a deadline. So, you know, as long as I'm keeping um, well fed and hydrated, then I'm usually happy <laughs> and, and well caffeinated. Of course. Yes, absolutely. The imperative <laughs> yeah. part of anyone's career at the moment. Yeah. <laughs> so um, has being involved in the creation of music um, always something you've been passionate about? Uh, and if so, where did it start out or is it something you've recently come into? Yeah, I think um, it's definitely something that's been with me for a really long time. And, and I would say I definitely get that from, from my dad. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, my my first recollection of, of music was listening to his old records with him. And I always talk about my love for the Eagles. And that was the, the first band I ever remember hearing. Um, and I always remember thinking, even at that young age, like if I ever get to work in music and am able to make somebody feel the way that I feel about hearing the Eagles for the first time, even if it's just one person, I'll be like, job done. I'm I'm so happy. So it started as 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 far back as that and then I did some audio courses in college and university and then a kind of traditional route into, you know, um internship roles and studio mm-hmm. assistant roles until I kind of got my bigger break as as an engineer at a place called Tape London in in central London, mm-hmm. uh, which is a nightclub but also has a recording studio in the basement. Gotcha. So we would have artists come and perform in the nightclub, and then they would come to the recording studio afterwards, and I would record them and mix them and nice. kind of develop my craft there under a guy called Hef Marais who. Yeah, it was a big, big influence on, on my career. He's reasonably legendary in the industry, I yeah, suppose, I isn't he? So, <laughs> yeah, I would say so. And also just like a great guy. And mm-hmm. me and him still have a really good relationship now. Um, and, and then I was there for two and a half years. And uh, yeah, and then I went freelance and kind of took the leap um, and haven't really looked back since okay. then. So in, in short, I've always had the interest, but um, the, the older I got, my interest in the studio side of things kind of developed more and more Mm. so okay cool loving music um being passionate about it obviously mixing it and working with it on a daily basis um this is the hardest question i think i can ever imagine asking anybody um do you have a specific uh artist genre uh any kind of favorite music yeah that is a hard one actually um i guess i kind of mentioned it there the first band I ever remember listening to was the Eagles as I've grown older and I've seen them a handful of times live with my dad, which is mm-hmm. always a really special thing. So whenever I think of like favourite artists or favourite albums, I always think of them. I suppose it's a difficult question to answer because for different stages in your life, you have different bits of music that kind of represent of course. that time. Yeah, so yeah. I think of like, that's the constant when I was younger and going through like, you know, my little old emo phase, I was (laughs) listening to like Funeral for a Friend and like, you know, that type of music when I was a teenager. And then when I was at uni, there was like a dubstep phase where all our mates were listening to that. And I I would say the the constant is kind of like rock and roll. Mm -hmm. Um, So, I mean, when I'm working, I love working with live instrumentation live drum kits and guitars i love getting a good sound out of those so if i had to put it down to like one genre i'd say rock and roll do you listen to the music that you would mix for example in your own spare time when i'm mixing something um it's usually so much critical listening that by the time i finished it i need some space from it and then Mm -hmm. i might listen back after like you know a week or two or maybe even longer like a a month or two um and then i'll just be like overly critical like i could have done that better i could have done that better um but i think because you're so heavily focused and involved in the song when you're mixing it it's natural to kind of lose a bit of perspective on it once it is released and Mm. finished so you do need a bit of space sure um and then yeah always come back to it and (laughs) criticize absolutely yeah (laughs) so obviously working in the studio and and various other places uh throughout your career so far what are some of the biggest challenges you've come across as a mix engineer, like in the studio space doing it, being the mixing, or is it the actual recording process? Is it the people you work with? Is it, you know, is, or is it your own mental space that you've got to work with and all that sort of thing? So. Um, I, I think that as a, I think as a recording engineer and an, an audio engineer in general, you're kind of just troubleshooting and like putting out fires as you go anyway. So there's always kind of like little errors that you need to troubleshoot and you learn from each time so they don't reoccur. Um, I think as well, there's a massive 
one thing that I've found difficult earlier in my career is finding a balance between mm -hmm. work and life. Um, so when I started my career, there wasn't much of a work-life balance and I was on the grind mm -hmm. and just wanting to work, work, work and mm -hmm. make a name for myself. And as I've been in the industry longer, I've realised how important it is for me to have more of an even balance and probably tip more in the life direction than the work direction. I love mixing records and I love working on music, but for me to get the best out of that, I need to have a good life balance as well. Absolutely. So, Burnout is a thing, isn't it? Absolutely. Absolutely, so. yeah. Absolutely. So um, I'm going to hit you with one last question. Okay. Um, how did you hear about us? Uh, us being Chord Electronics Limited. I first heard about Chord through our good friend uh, Chris at Audazy. Yes, Mr. Barons. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> and I, I guarantee that I've almost pronounced Audazy wrong. No, that's actually spot on. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, Chris would be very yeah. happy with me. <laughs> um, yeah, I had spoken to Chris because he had kindly let me demo a pair of LCDXs and I was looking for an amp to power them, mm -hmm. and he kindly put us in touch, He's and yeah, yeah and, and our relationship has been ever growing since absolutely. then. Absolutely, for yeah. the best, yeah, absolutely yeah, for the absolutely. best. No, that's good, that's great, cool. cool. Well, thank you very much, Will. It's been a, it's been a pleasure. Um, yeah, it's good to meet you in person, and hopefully we can take it from there. So. Thanks very much, Don, appreciate yeah. it, thanks for having me. Cheers.